Um, well, but, but I also want to say before I, uh, I'm going to I'm going to say a few things about and give you an example, and then I want you to uh, write down an example of a social issue you don't know much about, and whether you have an opinion and so forth. But let me give you an example or two. Um, Ruggiero points out that by acknowledging that you don't know everything, you open up the possibility of learning more about the evidence for and against a particular issue. After you examine the evidence, then you can see whether you still agree with whatever opinion you started with. You have to look at the evidence. You don't just take some libertarian guru's word for it. And the example that I'm using here is about feminism. Many libertarians have an opinion about feminism, but they don't really know much about it. They may know what they read in the papers, and my answer to them, to them is, you don't believe what you read in the, in the media about libertarians. Why do you believe what you read about feminists? <laughs> and you um, probably have all seen this. Most of them who attack feminism haven't ever actually read a book on feminism. Uh, maybe they saw some article somewhere, but that doesn't qualify as adequate knowledge. And then, of course, the extreme ones are the ones who throw around terms like feminazis. And they don't, and I know they don't, they haven't read feminist literature, but they think they are entitled to an opinion. Well, okay, or I suppose you could say everybody's entitled to opinion. But some opinions are worth more than others, and theirs is not worth much. You have you have to be aware, and on this particular issue, there's a wide range of views on feminism. And I'm taking that example, but it's true for any uh, point of view. There's a wide range. There's lots of different kinds of libertarians. Is it okay to condemn all libertarians for what a few do? We'd all say no. Well, it's not appropriate to condemn all feminists for a few that you may be aware of, or any issue you care to name. I just picking some of my pet peeves, okay? Um, so, if you don't know about an issue, you really need to learn about it before you have a reasoned opinion. I mean, you can have an opinion, but it may, if you haven't read about it or have much knowledge about it, it's not a reasonable opinion. Um, so I even had, uh, and, and here it isn't just always just the guys who are clueless. I had one woman on Facebook, I used the phrase libertarian feminist, and she snorted, she really did, in verbally, snort and said, no, I've heard everything. <laughs> and I know she didn't know anything about it. Uh, she obviously wasn't interested in learning. Well, that's not a critical thinking attitude. Okay, so now I want you to quickly jot down, if you haven't already, a social issue that you don't know much about. And, and answer the questions here. Do you have an opinion? What is it based on? Do you voice your opinion? Do you want to learn more about it? Just make some notes to yourself. Again, I'm not testing you on this. And I will give you a, a moment or two um, to think about that. And again, as I say, it, it's not something that only libertarians do, that's for sure. This is pretty common. You've all heard the kind of person who has an opinion on something and you know they don't know much about it. Well, that's not being a critical thinker. <coughs> yes? <coughs> what possible thing can there is there to know about any social issue? I mean, aren't social issues just something that politicians and the media just sort of make up for us to argue about? No, I wouldn't about? agree with that. Let's, uh, I was, there was an example I was going to use later on. Well, let's talk about global warming. Hmm. There's, there's a di division of opinion on that. And how much do you know about it? I mean, there's, a, there's a, a lot of material on one side, a lot of material on the other side. The critical thinker is going to read both sides and see what makes the most sense to them. But it's and, still sense. 
Pardon? This point is still kind of staying. Like, oh, you mean it's an issue politicians made up? Mm -hmm. But you don't know whether they made it up or not until you read about it. <clears throat> it's an issue that many people think is legitimate. So you have to read both sides. And you may decide that it's bogus, but you don't know that until you read both sides. You can't just read the side you like or the side you favor, which I'm going to emphasize over and over again. Yeah. Um, and there are, well, what I mean by social issues are feminism, education, you know, civil rights, whatever. It could be all kinds of things. Do you include just person to person in social? Personal liberty? Person to person, like a neighbor to neighbor or within the family? Well, that could be. Yeah, I mean, what, you know, whatever issue you want to think about, if it's something where there's two sides, mm -hmm. The critical thinker looks at both sides. Whatever kind of issue. Yeah, a lot of a lot of issues have fourteen sides or twenty-two well, sides. Right. Yeah, I, I say two I sides, know. but you make you make an excellent point. When I say look at both sides, I mean look at the most relevant sides. You're right. Yeah, Many issues range have more than two sides. Yeah. Um, yeah, global warming is really complex because there are actually three main. Okay. Issues. There you go. There's there's. Is that and, all? <laughs> Three main ones. Three oh, main ones. And it doesn't mean that you have to read books on it, but you got to read something if you want to have a reasoned opinion. Yes. Well, because, you know, knowledge is like this asymptote where you can never know everything. No, you can't. So does that mean that you'll never know enough to talk about it? No. Uh, that would be unrealistic. But you got to... I guess the real point I'm making here is you have to read a little bit, at least, from both sides. You can't just assume your side has the whole truth and the other side has no truth. I mean, in some cases, you may decide that is the case, but you don't know until you look at the other side. And you can reject their arguments, but you got to look at them. Is it just sufficient, then, to know what the other person's argument is? And then when you make your argument, you say, well, their argument is this, but I refute it by saying such and such. Does that make you a critical thinker? You have to look at the evidence that they present and judge it independently. That's the kind of point. Let me move on, and, and maybe some of the other things I'm going to say will help clarify it. And then if you're still not sure, you can ask again. Okay, the next point. Based judgments on evidence, see these are all tied together, so you, you know, they're, they're not exactly separate. They're just different ways of saying the same thing in some sense. Mm -hmm. You base judgments on evidence rather than personal preference. Deferring judgment whenever evidence is insufficient. Then you revise your judgment when new evidence, if new evidence reveals an error, okay? Because every single human being is subject to bias and unquestioned assumptions. If you say you have no biases and no unquestioned assumptions, you're either, either lying or incredibly naive about human psychology. Every, there is no perfect person. And we all make mistakes sometimes. Even the, those of us who have studied this stuff for a long time. So you have to be willing to admit you could be wrong. If you go with your first impression or gut feelings, it may, in some cases, not all, may be because you're clinging to an earlier, more comfortable views that you simply accepted and never thought much about. That happens a lot. A lot of people do that. Now, sometimes your instinct or gut feeling, I'm using these metaphorically, please, um, might sometimes be right. But don't accept it or reject it until you look at other evidence. I mean, this is the ideal. Obviously, we can't do this all the time, you know, on every single issue. Otherwise, we'd be sitting around reading stuff all the time. I'm just suggesting to the extent that it's possible, this is the way to be a critical thinker. Uh, you, what you don't want to do is say, I just know I'm right. I don't care about the evidence. <laughs> <laughs> that really doesn't work. Uh, that's a red flag saying that you're believing it for emotionally laden reasons that may or may not 
be uh, reasonable. Um, I guess I, I don't see, uh, like, what is the end goal with uh, being a critical thinker? Because you can have a society of people, you know, uh, having a dialogue and it's open and it's critical, but then the outcome is maybe mass murder, for example. Um, I really think that's highly unlikely that that would be the outcome. You start with critical thinking. I'm not saying it's the whole what? enchilada. But, but if you don't, if you just, if you don't look at evidence, if you don't think for yourself, because really critical thinking is about thinking for yourself. If you don't think for yourself, you will be vulnerable to any uh, politician or guru or whatever who comes along, who has a slick approach that sounds reasonable on the surface. And look, I mean, the, the obvious and most outrageous example is Nazi Germany. We've got a lot of people who weren't critical thinkers there. And they were taken in by a charismatic leader. At least they thought he was charismatic. Thought he looked like a nut job to me, but okay. Um, so you ha it's really the basis is thinking for yourself and not just accepting somebody else's word for it. And I would maintain, and all people who teach critical thinking would maintain, that you really need this to have a reasonable society that doesn't get waylaid by charismatic con men and con women. That's that's what you one of the things you're trying to protect yourself of, against. Um, so you have to ask yourself, <coughs> what are the reasons for accepting the claim? What empirical evidence or logical argument supports the theory? What evidence refutes the argument? What are the strengths and weaknesses of both sides? How reliable is the evidence? Sure, I'm not saying this is easy. It's a lot of work. You can't do it on every issue. But if you can't, if there are issues that you just can't take the time to look into, don't have, and, and you know, you can even have opinion, but don't kid yourself that your opinion is a good one if you haven't looked at the evidence. Uh, and again, these are just guidelines. Uh, you do it on the issues that matter most to you. You can't do it on every single issue under the sun. There's not enough time. Now, those, uh, let's see, I want to make sure, okay, yeah, I want to give you some examples. Those who are proud, I'm using libertarian examples, remember, those people who are proud of being politically incorrect on every issue, you've all seen them that type. Those people are reacting emotionally on a gut level. If it's politically correct, they reject it. That's not critical thinking. That's knee-jerk libertarianism. Let me give you an example of of that. This is an actual example. I'm not going to name the person because that's not the point here. In this case, it is not a guy, lest you think I'm only picking on guys. <laughs> this is a libertarian woman who um, took the position that me it's men who are oppressed in the United States, not women. That men are more oppressed than women. Now, one of the examples she gave to support this position, she claimed that, I mean, she said, well, there are more women than men in college. And that was supposed to be some evidence that men were more oppressed. And I called her on that because, A, I was a college professor and she was not, so I figured I knew a little bit more than she did. But I've also taught psychology of women and I know why more women than men are in college. And it is not a conspiracy against men. In most colleges, one of the major criteria, criterion, uh, the major, one, one of the important criteria is that the grade point average. Girls make better grades in high school. Why? Because boys fool around more. Not every guy, of course. Okay, just in general. And so that, and also, a lot of young men can often go into fields where they're going to make plenty of money without going to college. That is not nearly as true for women as it is for men. So it has nothing to do with discriminating against guys. 
and I've read the evidence. She had not. What she did was decide this position, this politically incorrect position, then look around for evidence to support that seemingly supported her point of view. That's not critical thinking.